Hello everyone, how are you all? Today on Scottish Memories, we are chatting to Liz McColgan. How are you all? Hope you are all happy and healthy and safe out there, wherever you are. Just before we get started, if you haven't already, please remember to hit that subscribe button, both on YouTube and on podcast. Leave a like, leave a comment, and especially on podcast, please remember to leave us a review and rate us as well. That would be brilliant. Thank you very much. But today, I am genuinely getting to chat to a sporting legend. Scottish-born athlete Liz is a twice Commonwealth Games 10,000 meter gold medal winner, silver medal in the Seoul Olympic Games 10,000 meters, gold world champion in Japan 10,000 meters, same year winner of the New York Marathon, next year winner of the World Half Marathon champion and Tokyo Marathon, London Marathon winner in 1996 and 1991's BBC Sport Personality of the Year. Liz, hello, how are you? Hello, I'm doing very well, thank you. Um, in sunnier climes than you, I'm now based in Doha, Guitar, so quite uh, many miles away from Scotland. Yeah, but just a little bit. Um, but how is it over there? Is it nice? Very hot at the moment, yeah. hot and humid every single day. So it's uh, sometimes you just wish for a little bit of rain and you miss it. Yeah. Um, but um, you know, you get used to it, and you know, we, we get stay an awful lot of time indoors, which um, you know, because it is so hot and humid, you're talking sort of like 46, 48 degrees every day, and humidity can be up to 60, 70, and it's, it's quite stifling. So, um, so these summer months, we tend to just stay indoors and do things like go to the malls and things like that. So um, not a lot of outdoor activity because it's very, very difficult to do what I do outdoors. Yeah. How are you though? Is everyone health and uh, safe with all this COVID stuff? Yeah. You're, you know, well, um, I think we've been very, very lucky that we're in a, a small nation because they have been able to be very thorough on their restrictions and um, everyone's pretty much been doing what they're told <laughs> and um, you know I think that uh, you know um, it's prob I feel it's probably one of the safer places to be in the world at the moment because they can't control the restrictions so well as what they do um, and you know we're like everywhere else you know we're still in phase three we were supposed to be moving into phase four but they've stopped that um, so we're just kind of hovering in phase three for a bit um, it's getting back to some normality, but um, it's good to see that everybody's wearing masks outside. Um, you know, if you go to restaurants or anything like that, you only get a two-hour slot, so you're not, like, hanging about doing things and that. And, um, you know, the, the beaches and the swimming pools just got opened last week, but there's restrictions on how many people can enter, uh, even, even on the beach there's restrictions um, and there's restrictions on how many people can go in a swimming pool and things like that. So it's, you know, it's as safe as what it could be on government guidelines and we're just all awaiting some kind of injection that's going to miraculously cure everything and then we'll hold it back to normal. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's pretty much the same all over, eh? I know, I think we're kind of a little bit the same as you. Like, you know, being a small nation, I think it's definitely played to our advantage a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we're, we're having a, a, a slight spike right now, but nothing too bad. And I think we're on, we're about a month and a half at least without a fatality, which is brilliant, you know. Yeah. I mean, so, um, yeah, same as you, really. As long as everyone keeps doing what they're told, then... Again, hopefully a, a magical injection will appear at some point and we'll all be okay. It's about like people taking responsibility for their actions, isn't it? And, you know, like, I feel, you know, I've got a mother who's like 82 years old and she's been in lockdown since March because she uh, isn't healthy. She's got um, cancer and she's got uh, lung problems and things. And I think it's people that are not abiding by the guidelines that are making it more dangerous for the sick. And um, I think that, you know, everybody has to take the response. But even though you're fit and healthy, it's up to you to, you know, wear a mask and wash your hands and do what we're getting told to do for to protect people that are a little bit more vulnerable than you. Yeah. And if we had that attitude, we'd be in a lot better place. Yeah, 100%. I completely agree. Both my parents are in their 70s. My wife at this point, as I'm talking to you, is seven and a half months pregnant. 
So it's, you know, and, and so when this all started, it was like, right, I've got to look after all these people here. All of you are staying in. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, we'll jump right in if that's okay. So growing mm -hmm. up, how much did you get a chance to sort of explore Scotland? Did you have a lot of staycations, anything like that? Like growing up, like um, when I was a child, my mum and dad were unemployed and they had four children and we didn't get holidays abroad or anything like that. And the only holidays that we got were from my mum's um, elderly aunt and uncle and there was another uncle who was a bachelor and between the three of them they were the ones that took the four kids away for weekends and holidays and stuff so our holidays were spent in like caravans and um and sort of going about with my aunts and uncle um to wherever they took us <laughs> pretty much <laughs> It's funny, you're not the first person to mention that. The, uh, the amount of people that, that have said that caravan and holidays round about, uh, was, it's not something that my mum and dad really did with me, but it, I think I feel like I've missed out a little bit because the amount of people that are saying, yeah, we loved it. We just jumped in the caravan and off we went, and it was brilliant. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. um, we were very lucky that my, um, that my uncle um, had a, a caravan that was the... You know, it was a, quite a big one that he had and we were able to house, you know, the four kids together and stuff with, with them. Um, unfortunately, my mum and dad never got to come with us, but um, it was, you know, it was really good. I had a lot of great adventures, um, you know, with like my my uncle and my, my aunt used to take kids out pretty much every weekend to somewhere in Scotland, you know. Um, so we were always um, out on... But, you know, Sunday afternoon drives to wherever they took us, got our lunch and then came back. So, um, you know, we did used to see quite a bit around uh, Scotland by driving and things like that. So we were quite lucky in the fact that they took the... T like, obviously, my aunt and uncle didn't have any children. And then, obviously, my other uncle, my mum's other uncle was a bachelor. So, they, they were, you know, like we were kind of the closest that they would have to kids. So they just took us um, and gave mum and dad a break, really, you know, at the weekends and things like that, and just drop, picked us up and dropped us off, really. Yeah. I was, I was chatting to, um, oh, I can't remember who it was now, Andy Gray. Um, and uh, I was telling him, my, my two aunts did exactly the same thing. It took me, it, we went on a, uh, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but I just, obviously, obviously I just said this to someone else. Uh, but... Um, my two aunties came in one day and said, right, we'll take him out for a day. You, you have a break. We'll take him out. Drove us from Edinburgh, across the bridges, across the uh, Fife, Perth, found a wee cafe, had beans on toast, and then went back home again. Yeah. That was the whole day out. We drove over, had beans on toast, and went home. <laughs> and, uh, our, our thing's probably fish and chips on the way back. and you know, But it was great when you're young like that there. you know, It's quite an adventure when you're like, you know, seven, eight, and nine, and you're, you know, you're exploring things and that. So, um, you know, we, we never really, um, we, we always looked forward to it. Like, you know, it wasn't a drag or anything. Like, we, we uh, had a lot of fun as a young family with, with those elderly um, relatives. When you started running, did you, did you, I mean, you must have, because it's long distance running, you did, you must have been out in the countryside a lot trying to, you know, get those distances. Um, you must have saw some spectacular yeah. views. Yeah. You know? Yeah, we're real lucky. Although we lived in a council estate, um, mum and dad had a, a flat in Whitfield. But Whitfield was um, based, like, it was right on the edge of the countryside. So I literally just stepped outside, you know, went, went outside the door, down the steps, outside the flats, and I was right on country roads. So I was really fortunate that um, when I trained as a youngster, um, I had all the countryside. I, was, I wasn't running inner city or anything like that. I was always out, a lot of green, you know, in the fields and things like that. So, um, and even as a play area, you know, we were very, very lucky. We used to, like, you know, even as kids, although we didn't have much, um, we played a lot in the, the, the nature outside, like, you know, in the fields and in the dens and things like that. So, um, we were, although, although we were on a council estate, it was actually quite um, easy to access, you know, outdoor space. 
Yeah, I, I, I loved that when I was a kid. When you said the word den then, I was just like, God, I, I had a vision of a bit that was no far from behind my mum and dad's house, just behind the garden. And there was a tree that just, you know, one of these trees that was half fallen over. Yeah. So it had grown and it had to stay. And it, 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 I forgot all of it. It's one of these random memories just sparked me and my friends playing in this den underneath all these little bits. And, and, you know, it's one of these things that I don't think kids get a chance to really do nowadays. We don't. We don't. Like, we had a thing called Tarzan's Island, and it wasn't an island. All it was was, like, a little burn that had a, a rope tied to a tree, and we used to swing across it. And that yep. was Tarzan's Island. And all the kids, you know, used to go to Tarzan's Island to play. But it wasn't, it wasn't even, like, it was just, like, a burn with a swing, you know, a rope. But um, it's amazing what the imagination, and it was all just overgrown. <laughs> so that was it. But, um, but yeah, I was fortunate in the fact that, um, you know, although, you, you know, we did get um, a lot of access to, to the, the farm and well, just, just farmland and country roads and things like that. So it was, it was quite good. Do you have any favourite bits to sort of run about? Um, I used to, I used to just, uh, I'm an offy, <laughs> I'm an offy person for uh, running the same loops. I'm not, I'm not one that daydreams and goes out and, you know, like sort of blase and just run where I want to go. Um, I was a very time-orientated person and everything was timed and uh, measured. And uh, so I used to have set loops that I used to set myself and just try to run faster every time I went out. But um, the good thing about it, it was like just natural hills, eh? So yeah. like, you know, you'd just be out in the hills and, you, you know, and, uh, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd be able to run, oops, sorry. Um, you'd be able to run all the way, um, you know, like sort of from like where I was in, in uh, Whitfield and you used to go around and go up the country road and you'd be more or less going towards Forfer, which would be like 15 right. miles away, yeah. you know, and things like that. So um, it was, you know, I was very, very lucky in the area that I lived for being a distance runner. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it was uh, just a natural reserve of what I needed to, to go out and just enjoy what I was doing. I would imagine as well, since we're all, we're not exactly a flat country. So, <laughs> you know, running up and down, nothing would be an easy run for you, really, I can imagine. <laughs> I mean, you know, running in the hills, it make, you know, it's good for runners, you know. Um, you know, I, I never had a problem running up a hill or running down a hill, you know. Um, and it was all, you know, it was all country roads and tarmac, so it wasn't like, um, and like off-road trails, you know, like natural trails, if you know what I mean. Um, you know, so you weren't running on concrete or anything like that. And, and as I say, like, you know, when you're running past fields with cows and sheep and, you know, you just get carried away with it. And uh, whether it's raining or not, you still really enjoy the environment that you're, you're running in, you know. And yeah. um, as I say, I was very, very fortunate to be in a good part of the world um, and part of Scotland, actually, to do that. Do you get back much? Um, I don't get back as much as what I'd like. I mean, I was supposed to go back in the summer there and that's all got you know, because of the virus and things. But I try to get back as often as possible because all my family's still there. Um, all my family still live in this kind of the area within like a 10 mile radius of where, you know, we were brought up really. So um, I do tr try to get back as much as possible to see them. Yeah, I mean, it is, uh, I suppose it's, it's a very different environment where you are now, but I suppose missing the rain is not a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> it is a, it's a freshness of it though. You just you kind of miss that fresh crisp air you know like sort of in the autumn time and things like that you right. kind of miss it i've got to ask because obviously you've got a unique edinburgh memory really which uh, which you with which the must hold dear is obviously the commonwealth games in 86 yeah that must that must still be a very special thing for you there it was. I mean, um, amazing that I was in like more or less well in Scotland, so in my home country. But um, whenever it was announced, I always thought to myself, "Oh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to get excited about this because it's just an hour up the road. So it's like I'm running my own back garden, and it won't be like a championships." But the exact opposite happened. When you actually got to the games, it was nerve wracking. Um, you know, one of the best experiences I ever got was standing as part of the Scottish team outside the Medibank Stadium. That was full of spectators and um, they started playing the bagpipes and the whole team just to see blue just walked into the stadium and you, you just felt all the hairs in the back of your neck it was just an amazing amazing experience as a team to experience that you know the, just the home support and then obviously I was really really lucky in the fact that you know 
uh, I ran a brilliant race and I was Scotland's only goal. So there was a, a lot of expectation. So when the goal happened, it was such a big moment for Scotland and for everybody that was in that stadium on that night because they'd waited for like two weeks to get a gold medal. Yeah. And, you know, suddenly we had it. And um, I, I was very, very fortunate that it was me that was able to, um, you know, produce that run and to really um, savour every moment of the excitement and the, you know, just the, the emotions that were in that stadium that night when I actually did win the, the medal. It was just an amazing, amazing once in a lifetime experience. Never experienced it again, even when I won world titles and, you know, broke world records. It was never, ever, ever the same as what it was in Edinburgh that first time. I suppose it's, it's probably the same for anyone winning something, apart from the fact you know the the, the, the rep, winning representing your country, weren't it? But representing it in the capital city of your country at the time, I, I mean that must have been incredible. Um, I, I mean, I was I was eighty six, wasn't it? I was ten at the time. Yeah. Um, but even then, I can I can remember the t- the city was plastered with it all. It was everywhere. It was huge at the time. Um, and you were you might not know this now, but the the Meadowbank Stadium now is being completely rebuilt. It's yeah. been knocked down. It's can get. It's I think it's been, that's all being paused right yeah. now. But um, which is kind of a shame because I I wasn't a runner, but I did school athletics mm-hmm. and it all. Yeah. And it was a lovely. It was a lovely oh. face. Oh. It's a lovely space. It was. Well, I remember being about 12 year old and the first time I went in the Meadowbank and it absolutely scared me to pieces because it was so big. I, I just remember it being huge with a big stand at the back. And I think it was a really special place. And I, for one, was really, really sad when they sold it to the property tycoons to get the flats and stuff. I, I think sometimes you lose a lot of your heritage and it's not all about money. And I think, you know, me personally, I I think it was one of our historical sporting sites and um, it was a real shame for it to get knocked down. And so it's good to hear that at least they're supplying another track, but it will never be the same as what Meadowbank Stadium was. Um, But, you know, um, I think like, you know, for me personally, um, it was a massive turning point for me because I was kind of like an unknown athlete and it was my first championships that I'd ever, ever won. And it absolutely astounded me that after the won the Commonwealth Games, um, I couldn't sleep that night or whatever. And I was still in the halls of residence. And I went for a run. It was something like five o'clock in the morning. And the amount of black taxis that were tooting and rolling down the windows and saying, oh, Liz, you know, you, great performance. And I was like, how do they even know my name? And I couldn't phantom, you know, like sort of being from a nobody into sort of everybody knowing who you were and that people had watched it and, you know, and they were all part of it and really proud of it. And it really was a life a life changing race for me. You know, it kind of catapulted me into a whole different um, level of athletics. So, um, you know, it will always, always, always be special. And I think Medibank will always be special as well. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. It was, it was sad when they said it was going to get knocked down for buildings. But yeah, at least we're getting it. At least it's now getting rebuilt into a track. But it's funny, I was watching the. Uh, as, we all probably were here watching the uh, Commonwealth Games when they were in Glasgow just yeah. a few years ago. And the different scale of it then, yeah. Meadowbank, because Meadowbank was a one-sided stadium. Uh, no, they actually built up in Meadowbank. They actually built a stand all around the back. Oh, did they? Did they? Yeah, they, yeah, they built up six, it was like three tiers high. It was oh, huge. Right. And, okay. and, had, and they had a big um, hospitality suite down at the back end at the um, 300 metre mark, uh, no, at the, yeah, the 300 metre mark, no, 200 metre mark, just after, around the front bend, there was a massive um, hospitality suites and everything that they, bought, that they built for it, so the whole of Medi- Medibank Stadium was completely different for the championships. Wow, see, I, yeah. I, I was 10 at the time, so I can't, I can't quite... <laughs> they took yeah. all down, down, mind you, but it was built up, you know, there was a big, big... Uh, Big like load of seating all around the back end of it, like so. It was it was a lot more people in it than you could imagine. Yeah, that makes more sense thinking about it now because I always thought it was a bit funny just that one second <laughs> little. <laughs> 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 so if anyone was going to come over, well, as I was saying just before we got started, a lot of people that, that I'm lucky enough to, to come in and watch, that you know, they're expats or they're people with um, 
ancestry or they're just people who have never been and they're wanting to come over to Scotland. What sort of top tips would you have for anyone wanting to come over, really? I think that um, there's a lot of, like, um, a lot of natural history still in Scotland. And I think that there's a lot of little towns and sort of nooks and crannies that a lot of people maybe wouldn't think of visiting but miss out on like a lot of just natural treasures that, um, you know, like walks and um, uh, beaches and, you know, and, and maybe places that, you know, aren't like the main ones on the thoroughfare from like Edinburgh and Glasgow. And, you know, and, and so there's a lot of other little towns and things that are worth a visit. that have got like little hidden gems that a lot of people probably wouldn't really know about. Yeah, we're very we are lucky in that way. I, I, again, I've said this to someone recently, but this was actually a comment from um, one of the, uh, the viewers, and they said they'd been to Scotland, they'd fallen in love with it, and they were telling a friend about it. And they goes, truthfully, like we said, it's not a big country. Goes, you could probably see it in two weeks, but it would take a lifetime to discover it. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. I think is probably right, because you're right, we've got so many little hidden gems all over the place. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I'm, I'm sure you're incredibly busy, uh, but I've got, just to, to sort of finish off, I've got what I like to call um, difficult choice questions for any Scottish person. Um, shortbread or tablet? Shortbread. Shortbread, the straight in there. No, no, like fussing oh, about there. I love it with an espresso still. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I get, I've got to say question, was it a granny thing? Was it Because everyone sort of like the granny used to make a good shortbread. Every, every new year, we always got like, I mean like proper homemade butter shortbread and I've always loved it. My mum, it's my mum's favourite as well and we've always like, you know, I always, I always love it with a really black coffee. Right. I just love it. And I, I'd even eat it here, you know. Sometimes I need to just put it away because I can't eat one. <laughs> I'm like that with any biscuit to tell you the truth. <laughs> However, I'm for, for shortbread with me, nice proper ice cold glass of milk. That's oh, it. no. I like my coffee with it. <laughs> uh, haggis, neeps and tatties or mints and tatties? Haggis. Mm. The, the, haggis. The, the, All the, the time. Yeah. Yeah, I absolutely it, love it. It's it's one of the that one's been a fifty fifty split whenever I've been asking people. It's 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 you know it's a, no. I think it's a weird treat. Like I don't eat it an awful lot, but when I eat it, I thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy it. And it's very good for you because it's got um, it's very good for the iron in it. So there you go. The classes is a superfood. Yeah, it's got a lot of good uh, iron in it due to the the way it's cooked. Yeah, yeah. Uh, iron brew or whiskey. Um, none of them, to be honest. I'm not a fan of both. No. I don't like brew and I don't. I can't drink whiskey. No. I've only just been sort of getting into myself. I, who? Well, I can't get <laughs> But it's one of those things that, as a Scottish person, if yeah. you say you don't like it, you almost you're almost scared to say it to another <laughs> Scottish. Like I'm not a traitor. I'm just you know. <laughs> drink whiskey at all but I'm not a big alcohol drinker anyway and um, I can't drink whiskey and I am brew I just don't like it at all I never have no mm -mm. I mean it's 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 it, there's a taste not to be explained really isn't it <laughs> um, and just last but not least before I let you go uh, tonics tea cakes or caramel wafers caramel wafers yeah, <laughs> yeah I guess there you, I you know what you are thinking there's no <laughs> straight in there with the answers <laughs> I don't like the Malu at all, but um, uh, tonic key cakes is my mum's favourite, favourite. She absolutely loves them, but I don't like marshmallow or mallow. So, right. I, but I do love, uh, I do love the, the caramel wafers. Excellent. Again, with a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Liz, this has been absolutely wonderful. Thank you for sharing your time with me today, um, especially, you know, over uh, the other side of the world there. I hope you keep yourself safe and healthy. And, and congratulations when the baby comes along. Thank you very much. <laughs> I've got five, so I know exactly where you're going with it. <laughs> my, wife's, my wife's a bit nervous about it because I'm, I'm 6'1", and the, the scans have all said that the baby's quite long. And she's, oh. like, she's not happy. She's not. <laughs> hey, do you know what? My mum had four kids, and all my family's really, really tall. 
and I had the biggest feet out of everybody and biggest hands and I swore I was going to be like my sister's 5'11 my brother's like six foot and that mum's 5'11 dad's six foot and I swore I was going to get to six foot and I got a 5'7 it's like no rhyme or reason to it yeah. <laughs> so that was brilliant that was genuinely genuinely brilliant I really feel kind of privileged getting to chat about and share memories with a world champion and Commonwealth champion athlete. That was genuinely a, a memory I'm going to keep for a long, 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 long time. Liz, thank you so much for sharing your time. I know you're incredibly busy, um, so it means the world that you were kind enough to share some time and sit down and chat with me today. Thank you so much. For all of you out there, if you did enjoy that, please remember to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, leave a comment. But as always, keep yourself safe out there. Until next time, bye humans. Mm -hmm.